communist and as a communist party member uh, yeah. because i think that is um, always what i found uh, very special uh, since the age of 17 officially until now and i'll continue i have not always been a party member for a variety of reasons but always a communist uh, but always trying to be a party member no even if i do not necessarily agree. Now, uh, in Egypt, uh, I have recently published, the book came in Arabic first, but it came in French also, but not in English. Hmm? Um, the documents, some documents, which I felt very crucial, at a crucial point in time, 55 to 57, that is just before uh, Bandung and after Bandung, and in the Egyptian case, the uh, Suez Canal uh, nationalization and the war of Oct October 65, 56, and then 57, the massive nationalization and the beginning of so-called uh, socialism. Um, I found that these, these documents were very, very important to be known now. They are unknown now. Forgotten. The, the, the general public, including the politicized public, do not know them. And uh, even among the young, younger communists, uh, except those who have uh, more than 80, uh, they have not participated to that. With my analysis and comment today. But I published the document because a reader, I said a reader is not necessarily, should not be necessarily convinced that what I'm saying, my analysis, is, uh, is, not a, is, is just imagination. No, it's not out of the blue. Here, if you want to control, you have the text. Now, what does those documents show? It shows that there was a internal confused debate, very confused debate, through two understanding of what is the revolution needed, in that case in Egypt, but I would easily uh, generalize it, I said, for the South. Hmm? Is it a very conventional, uh, rigid, uh, <clears throat> pseudo-Marxist, but even if it Marxist, historical Marxism, understanding that is a popular democratic bourgeois revolution preparing the uh, eventual uh, move towards socialism or a national popular democratic, not bourgeois democratic, which is different. Now, uh, my personal understanding was that the first line, the national bourgeois democracy, was supported by the Soviet. Um, as uh, the task today, because it is anti-imperialist, and that's enough. And the bourgeois can lead, some bourgeois can lead an anti-imperialist. It looks like the support of the Soviet to Kuomintang previously, hmm? and not to the communist. Um, the other was inspired by uh, Mao's new democracy, that it is a democratic popular which means excluding 
the bourgeoisie from uh, the uh, alliance, which means uh, basically a alliance with the peasants, the vast majority of them, who are landless, poor and middle peasants, but also the urban, let's call it petit bourgeoisie, hmm? lato sensu, not only the nucleus of industrial working class, but also the petit bourgeoisie, and also the urban poor, which we would say today the informal sector, survival se activities, forms of activities. How to invent a proper form of democracy and in institutionalize it, that is, have laws and rules, not just uh, words and slogans, the working of such a democracy. There were two, these two ways of understanding. But why they were confused? Because at that point in time, the method still used by the communists was reading and reproducing. Either reading Pravda or reading Bao. Hmm? As two sacred uh, uh, <laughs> pro productions. Huh? And if you don't find an argument written, already written, either by Lenin or Stalin or Mao, then you are out of Marxism. Hmm? Which made the, uh, the debate very confused. I think this debate is a continuous one and will continue. Because what we had is after Bandung, Bandung showed two, two ways. One was the Chinese one, which was the Maoist hmm? one at that time. Uh, and similarly, the Vietnamese, very close to it, very similar to it. Hmm? Um, and a, a little later, the Cuban one, hmm? in spite of their al strategic alliance and dependence on, on USSR, uh, a similar thought. And the other were bourgeois state, but a state capitalism, not capitalism, the one as conceived by Nehru, or Nasser, or later Boubedian, or the Bas, or even boiled down a little in a number of African countries, from Benin, Mali, Tanzania, etc. Hmm? Now, both achieve things. The bourgeois state of the bourgeois concept of development, which was not, which was anti-globalization, that is a sovereign national project negotiating conditions of being part of the global capitalist system, but not accepting uh, the rules being imposed by the others. Hmm? They did achieve. They achieved um, beginning of industrialization with a predominant place for the public sector, but associated to local private sector, uh, reducing the status of subcontracting comprador type, they achieved more massively education, health, which allowed children of the popular classes to move up into the middle classes, which was 
giving legitimacy to those systems because uh, the the poor peasant in Egypt would say well, nothing will change for me but out of my children one will be doctor the other will be army officer the third one will be uh, I don't know what hmm? and it was true so uh, that upward uh, <clears throat> Uh, moving in the social uh, structure was giving legitimacy. So nobody cared about democracy. The one party, the pseudo elections was accepted because it was the tool to, to do those reforms. Hmm? But that came out of of steam very quickly. Once they had achieved that, it took 10, 15, 20 years. So what? Now what? Hmm? And it was at that point where there was the counter-offensive of liberalism that they, in order to remain in position of government, in, in, in service, in state, accepted moving into neoliberalism, opening. The word opening, in fitah in Arabic, was used as of 1970 in Egypt as the new policy is opening, in fitah. Hmm? So, and that changed completely from a pattern of that kind hmm, to a pattern of that kind. This is important to see the difference. You have the same genie in the two cases, but not at all the same meaning, social meaning. If everybody is benefiting even a little, or if most are losing, it's different. Hmm? So, uh, with the same genie coefficient. So, uh, I would say this is accepted inequality, unacceptable inequality. Hmm? Um, so that that was uh, the end of the. Now, accepting neoliberalism means that we are back to square one, to that there is no room for a bourgeois capitalist understanding of the solution to our problems. We are back to the national popular uh, alternative. But the national popular alternative is neither formulated spontaneously by the victims, nor even by those who pretend to be the possible vanguard, among which, among which the communists, but not only them. Hmm? So, that is what I'm calling the chaos. And then in all this, then uh, how about the, the, the kind of positions taken by the Communist Party of Egypt? Maybe you could also give us yeah. uh, um, an outline of, uh, yeah. of the Communist Party. No, the Communist Party stand, starts to be not so bad in the sense that, on paper at least, it is working and it was working with the people in order to, uh, to put a program, a detailed program, uh, with uh, responding to, to the real needs and demands, a possible one, which means that it doesn't uh, imply that uh, we uh, move totally out of the present globalization that uh, uh, is feasible in the sense that another system of taxation can produce enough, um, enough money to finance it, uh, feasible in the sense that it doesn't uh, generate a deficit in the balance of payments and therefore the need to go to uh, uh, Debts, foreign debts, and so on. 
something realistic, feasible. And the work done in that range of things is not bad. But it has to be translated uh, in action. It has to be um, uh, absorbed by the people in struggle as their demands, hmm? not demands suggested to them by others. Hmm? And this is a matter of organization and struggle, not of... And there, the repression, the continuous repression, and severe, of the state makes it difficult. The, the, the real access to the struggles. The struggles are there, but the, the communication between uh, the struggles is made difficult. That is one. On democracy, uh, on the other uh, uh, set, democracy, um, things are simul still confused because there are a lot of people who believe in elections, particularly the middle classes. And if the middle classes are only a minority, 20%, as in China, but there is, this is an important minority uh, because it has a position in society which is far more than their numeric represent number. And they are still the illusion of multi-party and elections as plus, of course, the human rights, plus in the case of Muslim countries and Egypt, uh, the uh, rights of women and so on, all things which are good. But um, elections and multi-party, they understand it as able to give, br bring the solution. And we are saying that will not bring the solution. Hmm? So that is uh, very confused. And here, the communists have, have no big influence um, or successful influence because they have nothing concrete to as an alternative. When we say democratic, uh, <clears throat> uh, popular democracy, what does it mean? Hmm? Uh, but the, 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 the poor or the no, understand it as the right of them for uh, to organize themselves to defend, which means for the peasant the right, but we say that has to be institutionalized. The law should forbid uh, <coughs> um, um, taking over the property of or, or the rent uh, the uh, of the land for the poor and middle peasants. It has to be protected by the law, not only by the organization. Yes, it is the organization of the peasants to that effect, but also the law hmm, to protect them. And uh, part of, good part of the middle classes is why the law? Private property and market is not so bad. Hmm? They still believe that. The speeches we heard here from so-called communists eh, on the virtues of the market and globalization. Um, so that is, national independence creates also confused because many of the young, relatively more among the youth, says we don't want this world because it is demagogy used by the power system in order to do nothing for us. Hmm? And we say, yes, the power system use it demagogically, but we want it real. And real means a real independence in designing our uh, for our foreign policies and alliances. Hmm? And they say alliances with whom? 
And there is the responsibility of China. When you say of Ch with China, but what China is doing for us? Nothing but trade. Hmm? So, this is why Russia is more popular. It is capitalist, eh? but it is moving in actively. Hmm? I've said, the, the ordinary people said, why the Russian army does not invade, liberate and reestablish the Soviet Union? Why this independence of those countries? It's nonsense. Hmm? So, the debate on the national issue, the three debates are, are confused. Hmm? And I, I think without knowing more, uh, I think it's the same situation in Tunisia. I was, uh, during our uh, conference there, I, I was on the TV, I discussed with people and they are very confused on many issues. They are also, more than e in Egypt, the middle class is completely pro market, uh, it, this is not the problem, the problem is dictatorship. Hmm? And true election is the solution. Uh, I believe that this is also uh, because of the stupidity of Bashar al-Assad, the opinion of many Syrians. Hmm? Yes. So, uh, can we go back to the question yeah. about you as communist and as communist party member uh, in Egypt, maybe um, you could give us uh, an outline yeah. of the, the the communist party of Egypt for the benefit of uh, yeah. the younger people uh, who do not know what yeah. has been happening. And then uh, I was actually very impressed with your uh, when you said that well one can be a member of several parties. Uh, yeah. yeah. And not just the orthodox yeah, kind. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because <clears throat> when the conditions were recreated de facto, hmm, and the jury to a certain extent by uh, the uh, um, abrogation, by the widening of the understanding of the laws in Egypt with respect to the creation of parties, then appeared of the historical communist tradition five organizations. One called itself the Socialist Party, the, the one to which I, I uh, gave my membership immediately. Another one, um, the, 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 there was in the Mubarak time a united party which was called Tagamo, the, uh, the Rassemblement, the bringing together. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, which brought together all the communists, except uh, five or six uh, Trotskites, hmm? uh, all the uh, left Nasserians who said that we are one for socialism, second not anti-communist, hmm? but we don't think that Marx uh, is the answer to uh, all problems, things of that kind. Huh? Um, in one party. This party exploded after the 25th of January because part of it said the main enemy and the exclusive enemy uh, when the Muslim Brotherhood came into uh, play, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, and therefore we should accept and support uh, the military alternative. But they were a, a minority. But unfortunately, a, important, a minority important because they were those who were integrated in the system uh, by not bad positions. Hmm? 
director of this, director of that, uh, uh, newspaper, hmm, etc. Hmm. And the majority, the vast majority, particularly uh, out of Cairo in the in the provinces, hmm, uh, who were uh, uh, true communists. Hmm. They wanted to struggle with the people for, for change, uh, including not necessarily having a, a clear vision of how and hmm, but those moved into creating uh, a new party called El Tahaluf El Shabi Democrati, the uh, alliance of democratic socialists. Hmm. The third one was nostalgic of the past. They remained with the name Communist Party of Egypt. And they said uh, everything was good in the Soviet Union. Uh, why it disappeared? It was a, it was a, a treason personal of Gorbachev hmm, and uh, a manipulation of the West. How can that destroy a strong country and party? It's not their problem. Hmm? Uh, but not antipathic in their behavior, daily behavior, but still very, very nostalgic and dogmatic. And the fifth, the uh, Trotskites, who before had never no existence in Egypt, hmm? and appeared with the curiosity following the British uh, Trotskites of an alliance with the Muslim Brotherhood against the main enemy, which is the military dictatorship. Now, that is, now, <clears throat> we, uh, we, many of us in, in, in the four, not, not the Trotskites, they remain and they want to remain independent hmm? and have a completely different line, but they represent nothing. Hmm? A few intellectuals, uh, including good intellectuals on other sides uh, for the, their uh, intellectual production, but nothing more. Hmm? The four others, we said we should come together. Now, the Socialist Party, the leadership of, of, of it was one person, Ahmad Bahaydin. And for reasons which are uh, absolutely unacceptable, he thinks that he is the better in Egypt and he should be the leader. And we say no, we are going to try to have an alliance, a deep alliance, not just tactical alliance, and uh, therefore uh, uh, there will be a, a, a collective leadership of many people. Uh, Tahaluf understood that and said, no, we are ready to accept people from uh, the uh, Socialist Party, from the <coughs> Communist Party, and 90% of the Socialist Party and 90% of the Communist Party moved in alliance with Tahaluf. We said, we don't care about the name, we accept your name because it's the name alliance of. Huh? An alliance of socialists, and we are all socialists, so there is no problem of uh, changing the name or things of that kind. Huh? And it is apparently becoming the the, the real the, the, the party. Hmm? That is the the other <coughs> will move out uh, disorganized. Huh? So. There is a Politburo, which is wide, 
uh, which includes people of all uh, origins hmm? uh, and um, and uh, it, it is not operating exactly along the so-called uh, democratic centralism the majority the decision and it should be implemented by everybody but by attempt to consensus and uh, and common action so, so then the original four have dissolved, yeah. or they uh, they are still in existence? No, no, they have dissolved themselves. Dissolved to yeah. form this bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So we are progressing, but uh, we have a tradition in Egypt which is a very bad one, which is the uh, the uh, uh, competition for leadership. Very personalized. Hmm? Now, Hamdin Sabahi, for instance, who has been, who had got the five billion votes. I, I had, we had, and I was participant to that meeting with him. He has, he created his party. But I put the question in the following way. I said, you got five billion votes. That was a gigantic victory of the left. He qualifies himself as Nasserian, not anti-communist. Nasserian, socialist, but we have to invent our socialism. It's not with Chinese characters, but with Egyptian characters. I don't know exactly what it means, <laughs> etc. Okay, but he got the five million votes. Now, where are those five million votes? I told, I said, you should have immediately established local committees everywhere with the local leaders or spontaneous leaders uh, who gave, uh, who organized the campaign for you hmm? and, and create a party with that. He did not do that. He remained in a very uh, narrow uh, electoral uh, or organization, not, not moving from electoral organization to a party. But he's a, not an enemy. And he, he discussed with us uh, very, and even my, my critique, which could look very severe, he accepted it, but I'm sure that he will not do more, <laughs> anything different. Hmm? And he's not part of this new alliance? No, because he wants to remain, and he thinks that he can collect uh, a lot of Nasserians. The Nasserians I saw, whom he collected it, none is less than 80 years uh, old. <laughs> None of them. I went to visit one of them, Mohammed Fay, who was a minister in the time of Nasser, who had been imprisoned by Sadat as belonging to the left Nasserian group. And he has forgotten nothing and learned nothing. He is living in 1956. <laughs> um, you told me the story of how you left uh, Egypt. Uh, yeah. So maybe could you capture those moments uh, of how you left Egypt the time? and then how you came back. Yeah. So those two moments of your life. Yeah. Yes. No, well, I left Egypt because I, I was going to be arrested and I had, uh, I knew that I had uh, something like three hours, uh, but I used them, uh, I think, efficiently. Uh, one, one and a half hour later, I was in Portside. Um, 
I had a, a gigantic advantage. It was the popularity of my father, who could uh, do anything. Uh, <laughs> and he took me. I, I, I told him I have to leave, and he understood immediately. And he took me, and he says, we go to the harbor, and I, we could move into the harbor without being controlled by anybody. Hmm? Uh, <clears throat> um, go on a boat. There is a, a, a ship which is leaving uh, the harbor. Let's go to that ship. To that, uh, and I, we went up. Uh, what is, is it about? And my father says, "My son is here. He will travel with you. <laughs> uh, how much you want?" And they said so much. He gave the double, <laughs> and that's all. <laughs> so it was. Uh, <laughs> and he could, uh, we entered the harbor by one door, and he, we were two, and he came out by another door alone, and nobody controlled anything. <laughs> that was the, and I thought that that would be, um, thanks to, you know, my, my father was without, he was never a communist, never, but he was a Maoist without knowing it because he organized uh, uh, eradication of, he was a doctor, huh? eradication of paludism in Port Said with Maoist ways, I mean with uh, mobilizing the people, uh, no cost and so on, and it was uh, totally successful. That gave him a terrific popularity, hmm? so that uh, after that uh, could do anything. Hmm? So. Uh, I said, if I go to the air airport, I have to go to the, through the police, uh, 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 find an air flight uh, quickly, and it's not sure in, within. Both sides is sure. <laughs> But could you tell us the circumstances uh, of uh, why you had to leave Egypt? Oh, it was. They it, knew nothing about it. Uh, no, this. it was. It, 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 it was very easy. It's very simple. 1975, after Bandung and after the war of October 1956, communists were accepted by the Nasserian regime to the extent that uh, the organization which was created to uh, control, organize and control the new public sector was the leadership was given to a communist, Ismail Abdullah, uh, a friend of mine, uh, elder, uh, not, not five years or five years elder or seven years, not much more, and we were personal friends. And he asked me immediately to come as his assistant, which I accepted. And <clears throat> Uh, I was working, we were working, we had a small team, we didn't want to create a big, big bureaucracy, but <clears throat> to, uh, to start the thing. The thing was moving ahead, not bad, taking all the objective difficulties and problems. Huh? And simultaneously, uh, we were in the same uh, Party, the Communist Party, and um, then came the um, 57, uh, the 57, the uh, preparation of the unity of Egypt and Syria. Now, this unity was achieved in 57, 58. It was done in a very, very bureaucratic way and undemocratic by an alliance of Nasserians and Baasists and a fringe and a segment of the Baasists in Syria. And it was a kind of... Uh, non-prepared unity. And with uh, terrific 
uh, stupid uh, slogans as we are one nation. We are not one nation. We are two nations since, uh, not since the British and the French in the area, since the Middle Ages. Hmm? Closed nations as you want, huh? but uh, it's a fact. <clears throat> it's not the, 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 the religion, majority religion is the same, it's Islamic. Huh? The, maj the language is close. It's close like the Chinese are. Huh? Uh, it's <laughs> it's the same writing. Uh, we can understand one another with no problem, but it's not. But that's not very important. What is more important is that the social fabric is totally different, hmm? because the natural conditions. Egypt is a country which has begun three thousand years before Christ, hmm? and we have have always the same administration. Since 5,000 years we have the same administration. The provinces, the boundaries of the provinces of the valley, not the desert, these are new ones, of the valley and the delta are the same as they were 5,000 years ago. And the names of the uh, capital city are the same as 5,000 years ago. Hmm? So, it's not to be proud of that, but this is a fact. It's a nation. It's not a, a new thing, a fabrication. Now, Syria, there is one thing which is big Syria, the real Syria, is Syria, Iskanderun, which is Turkish now, Lebanon, Palestine and Jordan. This is one country and it is one nation. The capital has always been Damascus. Hmm? And here also the Wilayat, the provinces have been, uh, they have their history, the Phoenicians, the uh, I don't know what, the Alawit and so on. So there is, it's not a united nation like Egypt. Hmm? It's a historical combination of very old small states and nations into one country. Hmm? Now this has been divided by the British and the French. The French divided it into two, Syria and Lebanon. They tried to divide it into more but they failed. The British divided it into two or three. Uh, <coughs> Palestine with part of it to the Jewish uh, new Im immigration and Transjordan, hmm? but it's one country. Now, <clears throat> we were very critical, the Egyptian communists, of that unity. We said it's not the way, we are in favor of unity hmm? as a historical uh, need and positive one, to face in common imperialism, to have in common radical reforms, but they are going to be different from one country to another because the social fabric is different. Hmm? And we cannot accept that in the name of unity, people of Cairo, because we are in more number, will rule everybody. No, the people of Damascus have to rule their own country, their part of the country. Uh, this is elementary. Hmm? Nasserian could not understand that. Hmm? And Nasser partic particularly. Now then, 14th of July 58, there is the revolution in Iraq. Uh, and the king is, uh, is uh, <coughs> moved away by uh, uh, the new republic hmm? uh, with a, the communists in Iraq. Now, Iraq is a third country. 
Hmm? It's different from Hashem, from Syria. Hmm? Because it was old Mesopotamia. It has also very old roots. I mean, Babylonia, uh, Assyria. Huh? Uh, it was very old one. And it has its own personality for that. Hmm? Um, it has its capital, Baghdad, hmm? which is not a capital fabricated by the British. It was there in the 12th century. Hmm? So it's not, uh, it's not something uh, invented by the imperialism. Hmm? They may play over the differences, but they are dif objective differences. Now, the Communist Party was stronger in Iraq than it was in Egypt or in Syria. Um, for curiosities, eh? one of them being that uh, the, the Shia dominating, or half, or a little more than half. It's not important to know whether they are 55% or, 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 or not. That is a dispute between the, the so-called leaders of Sunnah and Shia. We are the majority, we are not the majority. Are equal, say. Hmm? And those Shia, because they have been a minority in Islam, a minority who never got the power except in Iran, a not Arab country, never got the power, uh, they consider Sunnah as Islam of power. Hmm? And they are Islam of non-power. So they, there is a tendency to be a little more revolutionary, a little, more, a little less not respectful of power system. And therefore the Shia it's very interesting if you look at the names of Iraqi people during the past uh, 50 or 100 years and position. Shia produces two types of people in the modern time, communists and theologians. And Sunnah produces bureaucrats, technocrats, uh, um, um, Businessman. <laughs> very, very different. It's very interesting to see. So the Communist Party was stronger for that reason. Probably it had a majority of membership among the Shia, but they never said it because they said we are an Iraqi uh, a secular party. We are not the party of the Shia, we are the party of the Iraqi. Uh, proletariat and popular classes, etc. Which was to a certain extent right. Uh, now, therefore the regime was more left than the Egyptian one of Nasser, for that reason. The communists were immediately integrated in the ruling uh, system, in the ruling government. Uh, and there was, therefore, a terrible debate between Nasser and the Iraqi leadership, anti iraqi And we Egyptian communists took the position of defending the Iraqians, saying that their model is better than our model. And we should have not a unity, a strong confederation of three countries, Egypt, Syria, and Iraq, but maintaining some differences, because we were thinking that we would benefit from one of them being more advanced than the others. That made Nasser furious against us, and he decided to repress the communists. And Ismail, who was the director uh, of the Mouassata, where I was his uh, deputy, um, was arrested. I knew that that meant that I would be arrested a little later, hmm? but for sure. But I was with uh, with um, uh, Fauzi Mansour, who is another old comrade, who is in bad shape now, he's 92, 
Um, I saw him in Cairo, of course, I always see him. Um, and uh, uh, Fauzi, who took over the leadership of the uh, party after the big arrests of uh, January 59, told me, I don't know how we shall try to resist, we shall try, but if I am arrested, it means that the next day you will be arrested. Hmm? And uh, when he was arrested, it was in uh, December 59, I thought that it's, it's my time and I escaped on the, I think it was the 6th of January uh, next year. And then you returned. And then I returned. Then I was, <clears throat> I was on the list of people who, if returning, should be arrested. And that went for a long time, for something like uh, 15 years or so. And then they decided, probably because of my success elsewhere, hmm, that I should be... Uh, uh, brushed out of the list of people to be arrested. So I decided to go, to go back. Hmm? And that was? And that was in exactly in 81, after the assassination, because in between there had been the assassination of uh, Sadat. But before the assassination of Sadat, he got mad against the uh, uh, communist. He was always anti-communist. And he had put me back on the list of people to be arrested. So I had to, but he was assassinated a few months later, or a few weeks later, and Mubarak, who took over, uh, was compelled, or had decided, I don't know why, that uh, the last decisions of, of Sadat were stupid and should be brushed out. And it, it was in 80, and in 81, I immediately moved back. I, I thought uh, it was later that you moved back, but actually you moved no, back no. in 80, yeah, yeah. Yes. But then uh, maybe you could finish the story of what happened to the... <laughs> to, to the uh, big nation of... Egypt, Syria, and Iraq. <laughs> now it is divided more than ever, and the Muslim Brotherhood, who have established themselves in the three countries, uh, and in Palestine, in Gaza, they are ruling Gaza, very unfortunately, uh, have tried to brush out nationalism and replace it by Islam unity. We are neither Egyptian, nor Syrian, nor Iraqi, we are Muslims. Hmm? Which is a very empty phrase, but which had an echo because of the short-sighted uh, vision of the nationalists, of the Egyptian, Syrian, and Iraqis. The Syrian and Iraqis have done like the uh, Egyptians, finally. They have accepted no compadrization with moving into global liberalism, thinking that global liberalism will accept them, hmm? because they accept the rules of the... So they lost the legitimacy that they had by moving from the pattern one to pattern two, hmm? Uh, popularization, they lost their legitimacy and they did not expect that the West would take advantage of that to attack them, to get rid of them, to put directly the Muslims instead of them. Hmm? They were stupid enough not to have imagined that. Saddam Hussein to the last minute believed the American ambassador who told he, when he said, I will annex Kuwait, which was an Iraqi province, historically. I mean, it's like uh, if China decided to invade uh, Taiwan, huh? it's not invading a foreign country. Hmm? 
um, but uh, he decided that he asked the and the American ambassador it was a, it was a trick says we we don't see a problem with that which they used immediately against him hmm? um, so that shows how now they were how now Bashar al-Assad is not to have negotiated from the start understood that if he doesn't negotiate with the uh, real popular democratic movement he will be attacked by the Muslims hmm? and by the West simultaneously. So they are very narrow, narrow world. And this is what has created this problem of nationalism not being accepted easily by the people saying, you see what are nationalists? They just want power and once they are it's like the Kuomintang. Once you are in power, you can do whatever you want. Huh? Maybe we can conclude yeah. this particular yeah. session yeah. by looking at the um, the, 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 the new geo uh, politics mm -hmm. of the U.S. Uh, they couldn't control Middle East, but then uh, and or, but then uh, they just disrupted it and created chaos. Yeah. yeah. And in a way, that's objectively also uh, advantageous to them with yeah. all the divisions. Yeah. You see, and of course, uh, Russia is now completely yeah, yeah. different way. You see, uh, and I, I'm, 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 I'm right, I have written something on that point in my paper. Um, there, is, there are people who say, particularly in the U.S., that the U.S. have not the strength to uh, manage the whole planet exclusively by themselves. And that uh, um, for the Middle East, we cannot manage it, but we can try to keep chaos continuing. Chaos is a, is a drama for them, not for us. It's a drama for the Europeans also, but not for us. Uh, the main enemy is China and therefore we should move our attention to uh, reinforce the countries around China. First, remilitarize Japan. Second, reinforce our military presence in South Korea and use the dispute with North Korea and so on in order to justify that. Fourth, to reinforce our presence in the Philippines, in Indonesia, hmm? uh, perhaps even in the silly dispute between China and Vietnam, uh, take the position of Vietnam in order to isolate China. Um, and uh, reinforce our military presence there. Because nobody knows. Some day perhaps we'll need to have a war against China. Um, my comment of that is that is partly true. And they are moving indeed towards East Asia. But they are not abandoning the Middle East. Now, they try to maintain the chaos, but one they have failed with the main country, Egypt. Egypt is not in chaos. Problems, but not chaos. Uh, second, they are not winning in Syria. They are not yet being defeated, but they are not winning as they thought they would. My opinion is that they thought that after the victory in Syria, they would attack directly Iran. And they fabricated this, they gave importance to this affair of nuclear uh, weapons to that effect. 
But Iran was very clever. It negotiated instead of keeping, hmm? uh, because I wrote that. They thought, even if we produce two atom bombs, Israel have 200. And this will be a very good pretext for them to take in the, for the Americans, and the Americans will help them destroy us. What are we going to do with the two? Let's postpone that. Hmm? We don't need it. We can do it at any point in time, but we don't need to do it. It will be known, cannot be hidden. Hmm? Uh, we can see it with the example of North Korea. Hmm? So, they were clever to do that. The calculation of the US is that will bring back Iran to, be, to become, if not really an ally, at least a neutral power, accepting our rule of the Arab Middle East and being neutral in that. But the Iranis do not seem to, to think in that way. They think that on the opposite, the fact that the US have been compelled to accept the negotiation is a sign of weakness. Then we are an active actor in the Arab region. Now, the Western propaganda said it's the Shia who is trying to expand because half of Iraq is Shia and two-thirds of Yemen is Shia. Hmm? But it's not that. That is a tool. It facilitates things. But Syria is not Shia. Hmm? It's majority Sunnah. Hmm? But the power is Shia. Alawit are closer. They are not Shia. They are something very curious. A mixture of Christianity and Islam. Uh, um, uh, so, um, we are a partner. And I think they played a role in convincing Putin that you have a role. And one of the Chinese um, proposals is a good one if it is taken seriously, the Silk Road. The Silk Road, it's a name, means building alliances between China, former Soviet Central Asia, which neutralized the Uyghur potential hmm? anti-Chinese, Russia, Iran, and through Syria, going to the uh, Mediterranean Ocean. But until now, this is followed by no concrete things. It's a word, hmm? the Silk Road. I think it has to be translated. It's not, it's not a road for trade. <laughs> it's a road for political alliance. Hmm? and uh, political support, uh, the media, the Chinese media should, should uh, say more about what is happening in the region than being uh, uh, ignorant or looking ignorant or not, not wishing to be, not willing to be uh, um, seen by the Americans are bad people. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, and built it. Maybe between China and Russia now there is, there is more than that because there are also common interests, oil, and with Kazakhstan, hmm? oil, gas, with China is in need, and uh, the eventual um, Siberia, hmm? uh, common interests, but 
that seems to be all. It needs to be more than that. It needs to to go further uh, <clears throat> to into what is the policy of China in, in for the Middle East. Now, China as Russia have learned from the experience of of Libya. They have voted in the Council of Security accepting the uh, NATO and having been, as was should have been expected, betrayed. Hmm? Uh, <coughs> that was not to protect people, that was to destroy a country. Hmm? Uh, and they have not repeated it with respect to Syria. They have, But we need more than just, uh, just that. Hmm? As I said, the, the uh, moving in of Russia in the region is looked at by the Arab people as positive, including the government of Iraq. So why China is silent on those issues? It's hmm? thought, and I think China thought that it could be uh, no, it would avoid anything that would look antagonistic. Yeah, but it's and the blah blah. To Nepal, it's it's to it's the blah blah on the long uh, coexistence, huh? say long war. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can understand that Chinese want to be very cautious, hmm? uh, precisely because China is really potentially banished by the military Japanese US. Mm -hmm. military force in the East Asia. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think it's by just smiling that you reduce it. Mm -hmm. I am all in favor of a strong Chinese military force. You need it. You need it. But even that is not enough. You have to find, uh, to reinforce alliances. And you cannot get... China, as I said, has very important cards in its hands. It can help countries of the South who start moving because it can provide what the West will never provide, a support to industrialization, technologies. Hmm? Not only trade. If you offer that, you will be very popular. Presently, China is not popular. China is the country which associate does exactly like the West. Land grabbing, selling uh, cheap uh, uh, products, destroying our industries. Hmm? what remains of it, because the West has destroyed it. But still, that's all. Yes. Well. You know, China was very popular in Africa with the barefoot doctors. Immensely popular. Two or three things made China to the extent that most of the African companies became Maoist. Hmm? <clears throat> the doctors and the railway to Zambia, Dar es Salaam, Lusaka, which liberated all this region from the dependence of South Africa, at that time still apartheid, hmm? and which uh, uh, made much easier the struggle in Angola and Mozambique. Hmm? So it was an immense popularity. You have lost completely. And not on the ground, the people don't care whether the Chinese new way uh, is good or bad for the Chinese people. They ignore that. Hmm? But what Chi China is doing with us? Nothing. 
I like to give one example of what China could do. Two years ago, uh, in Zambia, there have been elections. The previous regime was a, one of the most corrupted regime. Uh, it lost the elections and came a new president and vice president and assembly, which are a little better which are at least, they have no big, big ideas, but they are at least uh, honest. And uh, the vice president invited me to Lusaka. And I went, and he said, what can we do with the Chinese? I told him the following. Look, the Chinese know what they want. They need and they want copper. Um, but that is a very good opportunity. First, you can discuss with them how they can get copper guaranteed to them by uh, producing, eventually, investing with the uh, state of Zambia. Uh, personally, I would prefer a state Chinese enterprise, but even if it is a private Chinese enterprise with the state of Zambia and with the agreement with the state of China, with China, to invest and guarantee that the production will be sold to China, you can negotiate how you will determine the price, accept the world price, uh, fix it in advance and put the rules, that is okay. But also you can ask, in counterpart, China to help you reconstructing the railway, which has been destroyed by the Israelis, um, reconstruct, reconstructing some local Zambian industries, providing the technologies, uh, an agreement which would, uh, uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a donation from China, money. It's uh, helping, uh, including financially, eventually, but with conditions, all that negotiated. So the ball is in your hands. You can, they have come, they want to come, and they want copper, uh, and, and you know it, and you can negotiate. But, and I said it blankly to him, to the vice president, if you say to the Chinese, take the copper and give me one million dollar in my pocket, the temptation for the Chinese to accept it is great. So it is up to you to ask more, to, not to ask that, hmm? but to ask for the Zambian people things, not for your pocket money. Hmm? It is regrettable that the Chinese would accept to uh, an agreement with giving you, uh, corrupting you, hmm? But uh, I'm afraid that it could happen. Yesterday, the way they summarized the, the session with you was that, yes, yes, we are for Professor Samia Min's idea of delinking. Mm. And, that, and that is also why we should go for more open up and reform. <laughs> <laughs> it's a contradiction. <laughs> yes. And, and, uh, and it's, it was... Yeah, it was just such a paradox, yeah. but then um, it was also interesting, the way they would, would try to reinterpret yeah. your idea of delinking. Yeah, yeah. So, could you tell us, uh, maybe clearly <laughs> yeah, and explicitly, yeah. what your ideas about delinking is? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I shall repeat wh what I said. Huh? Uh, delinking is a, is a strategy, it's not a magic formula. Hmm? Uh, it is a strategy of submitting external relations, and particularly economic external relations, 
to the needs and the logic of the top of the priority of developing internally. That is compelling to the extent possible the global system to adjust to your needs and not the opposite. I say delinking is just as a concept, a strategic concept, the opposite of the strategic concept of the World Bank of the West of uh, uh, unilateral uh, <coughs> uh, structural adjustment. Structural adjustment is that you should, the countries of the peripheries, should adjust in order to make uh, possible, to facilitate the continuation of the process of accumulation to the benefit of the monopolies of the centers. That is their concept. Uh, and they <coughs> wrap it up in the blah blah on the, the <coughs> A beautiful market, which is a solution to every problem, uh, without qualifying the market. It's a market dominate. It's a capitalist market. It's not even enough to say capitalist market. It's today a capitalist market dominated by the monopolies of the triad. Uh, they wrap, wrap, wrap it up also with the uh, globalization. It's beautiful. We travel freely. We. Uh, uh, learn from one another, etc., which are uh, empty phrases, <coughs> uh, uh, in order to to uh, give legitim legitimacy to this unilateral. As I said in a caricature way, it is asked to Congo to adjust to the needs of the U.S., never to the U.S. to adjust to the needs of Congo. Now, delinking is trying to do the opposite, and of course. One is never successful 100%. Uh, that is, the margin of compelling imperialism to adjust to you uh, might be and is China benefits of a wide margin of capacity, much more than Gambia, say. Hmm? But um, uh, through the South-South solidarity, and I'm stressing solidarity, not cooperation and trade, but solidarity, then that can, delinking can be uh, uh, a. After all, and I said, Bandung was delinking in the conditions of the time and with the limits of the time, was delinking. And Nyerere, a few years later, invented an, another word for it, which was uh, self reliance. Hmm? Uh, <coughs> okay, I'm not careful about. It's not very important how you qualify it. China is presently doing something which combined two conflictual policies. One is opening, and, and what is requested by the right is more opening, more market, more freedom of market on the one hand, but there is also in parallel to that, a policy of China of uh, a construction of a, uh, a, a complete, because of the size of China, is, it can be complete, modern industrial uh, uh, economy, uh, moving from uh, the uh, coast to the interior and with all the infrastructure that it needs and so on. and. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, that uh, industrial um, building can be in the service of uh, mass consumption, of, uh, of, of moving up the consumption of the majority, not exclusively of the middle class of, of 20% of the population of China. But this also in the case of China has to be more than it is uh, organized, combined, with the revival of the peasant agriculture and the moderniza modernization without moving to um, marketing, uh, to, to moving land into a, 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 a market uh, commodity. And how would this uh, delinking as a strategy be a uh, transition towards socialism or communism? I think it prepares better conditions 
for eventual gradual socialization of the management of the economy and the society. That is, I can, I can accept as a long transition something which I call state socialism, not state capitalism, state socialism, but with a view that through giving, uh, allowing the people to take gradually more real power in the management, we can move gradually from a, an economy based on, uh, on um, exchange values to an economy based on use values, which is communism. Yes. So could you tell us some of the, the happiest moments of your life? Well, so we can end on the happy note. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I have some very happy uh, moments in my life. Taking in order of the age, one was my childhood. I was very fortunate, not not in in a material way, but morally with my uh, father, mother, but more even my grandfather and my grandmother, who played a crucial role in my political awareness. Um, second was when I met Isabel. Uh, it was very quick and we came very quickly to understand that we would we would continue for life, which is the case. Huh? Uh, it was a very pleasant moment. I had uh, politically very pleasant move, mo mo moments. I think I shall always remember the deep uh, uh, pleasure, more than pleasure, uh, which the victory of uh, the Chinese Liberation Army uh, in 1949, when it moved into Beijing, and later in the 50s when it moved south, I was terribly happy. I was happy to the extent that I was naive enough to think that this is the end of capitalism. It will continue to India, to Middle East, to Africa. <laughs> we'll do the same with the same victory. It was naive, but it was still a, a big, uh, big... Uh, uh, but I had uh, also very sad uh, 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 moments in my life. The saddest is the loss of my daughter. Uh, that is uh, the most terrific um, uh, moment of my life. Um, also, I was very unhappy when the Soviet Union broke down. I was afraid of that since long time. Uh, I was afraid of that, but I kept the hope long time that uh, they could find a, a solution, center, left, perhaps a solution as the Chinese, as less bad than the f full breakdown and the breaking down of the Soviet Union in those uh, silly independent countries, uh, to me is a historical defeat, hmm? uh, but we bear uh, communism, historical communism, historical Marxism has a responsibility in that, a major responsibility in that. I hope that in the future we'll have some good news for the present, for the Middle East, it's rather bad news. I mean the a wave of Islamic fundamentalism an incredible stupidity and, 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 and criminality of those regimes, we have not yet finished with that. It will take long time. It will take more, more time than just uh, defeating them militarily, uh, which, I, which I think will come, but uh, more than more time. One of the reasons is that uh, the one of the things which make me really very sad is the degradation of education. In Egypt, education has become associating two silly things. One religion and the other is business. Full stop. And uh, 
I would say that uh, in order to build, to help building a, critis, a critical citizen, a citizen who is able to use his brain and with a critical thought, you have to stress in education of what is considered by the World Bank as useless. That is philosophy, history, social reality. Um, this, these things which are considered useless for the market are necessary for uh, creating a, a real human being. And this has been totally destroyed in the case of Egypt. And I think in the case of many countries. So when you mentioned one of your happy moments, it was the Chinese Revolution, and you were 18 at that time. Yes, yes. But that did, did not stop me from being, and this is perhaps why I was so naive, and I thought in the coming years, it will be the whole of Asia and Africa. In fact, I think um, the the energy uh, of the revolution yeah. and, and the optimism uh, that it brought. Yeah. So I think um, it, it, it of course changed yeah. a lot of the... The Vietnamese revolution, a war and double victory, the victory over, over the French in 54 made me terribly happy. And the victory over the Americans in April 75 made me very, very happy that the Western armies, including the U.S. Army, can be defeated by a small people. I mean, a people at the time of uh, uh, 50 or 70 million. No, not more. Hmm? But then uh, you have remained an internationalist. Yes. You have been in yeah. the yeah. <laughs> Well, I, my family conditions helped me to be an internationalist, because we used at home both languages, French and Arabic, um, uh, with on none of the two sides any chauvinism, no chauvinism at all, and that uh, uh, the two civilizations are absolutely equal, comparable, and we can exchange particularly good food, why not? <laughs> And we had to exchange with China good food, and why not? Hmm? Um, that is my uh, understanding of globalization, not trade. <laughs> yes. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.